So we're in Painswick, we're having a little walk around. There are six information boards dotted around the village. And we'll try and find them all and find out a little bit about the buildings and the areas and streets. It's a little bit of a hidden gem of the Cotswolds. Hope you're going to enjoy this one. Known as the Queen of the Cotswolds, Painswick is an archetypal town in Gloucestershire on the Cotswolds Way, so a great stop for passing walkers. Parking is limited, so we parked here just below the church, which dominates the town with its huge spire. The cemetery is quite amazing, with wonderful clipped yew tree paths and large elaborate gravestones. According to the information board, the earliest yews were planted in 1779. Apparently it has 99 trees, and that the hundredth would never grow. The Doomsday Book of 1086 mentions a priest in the town, so it's probable a Saxon church stood on this site then. The oldest parts of the current church date from 1377, and it has had many alterations over the centuries. The spire is an incredible 52.7 metres high, with the tower holding 14 bells, which sadly we never heard ring. A lightning strike in 1883 brought down a third of the spire. Let's have a quick look around inside the church, a service has not long finished. This is St Peter's Chapel, the oldest part of the church. Most of the interiors date from the late 19th and early 20th century renovations. During the English Civil War, the church was besieged, and this is the graffiti left by the soldiers. Many of the larger gravestones are of wealthy wool merchants the local skilled masons creating these memorials. One such mason, John O'Brien, who died in 1787, decided to have a very different memorial for his grave. We are now walking up to Victoria Square where we can see the Town Hall which was once a temperance hotel in the early 20th century. In the 17th century it was sited across the road where the War Memorial now stands. Cloth weaving was a big part of the success of the town, and in the 18th century, Cotswold's wool had long been known as some of the finest. And whilst initially a cottage industry, many mills sprung up on the Painswick stream, and the population grew. As steam power was introduced, the local mills failed to take advantage of this new technology, and with much competition, the trade declined in the town around the 1830s, with some of the mills changing output to make pins, hairpins and hooks. By the turn of the 20th century, Painswick was the biggest producer of pins in the world. The wealth many families enjoyed can be seen in the fine buildings dotted around the town, being built from local limestone from a nearby quarry. However, others were not so lucky, living in cramped, tiny cottages that might look beautiful and pretty today, but were housing desperately poor people in awful conditions in days gone by. This is part of St Mary's Street, bringing us back around to the perimeter of the church and the top of Hale Lane. In the distance we can see the courthouse, and I believe this was the site of the old manor house that was the centre of village life as early as 1050. 
The building has been replaced, but this one looks equally as old. A walk down Hale Lane highlights the lovely dry stone walls and the town's elevated position. This is the top of Tibbywell Lane. A steep hill leads down the valley to Painswick Stream, a walk the locals would have taken daily to get to the mills. Note the pub sign, all that remains of the Golden Heart pub. At one time, Painswick had 17 drinking holes. Curiously, the street sign is listed as the cross and I have no idea why. Ahead of us is the Painswick Centre, which was built in 1907 as a working men's club. It was gifted to the town by Francis Sarah Williams, she had inherited money from the family Liam Perrin's Worcestershire sauce business. Designed by architect William Curtis Green, who went on to design London landmarks such as the Dorchester Hotel and New Scotland Yard. The foundation stone was laid by Mrs Williams, which had been carved by the later famous mason and sculptor Eric Gill. Looking down Vicarage Street, we can see the many wool workers' cottages disappearing into the distance. Heading up Bisley Street, we're now on the oldest street in Painswick, 14th century, once the main route between Gloucester and Bisley. Part way up, we come to Friday Street, formerly the centre of Painswick in medieval times. Shops and cottages would have been on either side of the road, and in front of us we see what was the old market square, where on a Friday the market could be held, hence the name Friday Street. In the corner was a butcher's and abattoir. In World War II, Painswick was hit by eight bombs and Friday Street was badly damaged, resulting in a great deal of rebuilding after the war. Continuing up Bisley Street, Pack horses would haul the wool from the mills up this road, possibly passing through the green doors on the left to sheds behind the buildings to offload. Reaching the top are busy crossroads where New Street meets Cheltenham Road and Gloucester Street. Not far from here is the famous Painswick Rococo Gardens, an 18th century pleasure garden, which sadly we don't have time to visit today, but we'll be back. Let's head down New Street back towards the church to complete our loop of the main areas of the town. On the left is a long building called the Cloth Hall, which I couldn't find any information on, but obviously relates to the wool industry. New Street dates back to 1429 and is lined with many Georgian houses. Several are actually from the Tudor period with a Georgian facade. The only timber framed property on the street is the old post office. Up until 2013, this was the oldest building in the country still being used as a post office. Next door is a 15th century cottage called the Beehive. Across from Victoria Square are some of the most impressive Georgian homes in the town.
Continuing down New Street, parallel with the churchyard, is the Falcon Inn, a Georgian townhouse with 11 period rooms that could be a good place to stop for a pint or stay the night in this lovely town. Reaching the far corner of the church is the impressive Lich Gate that was actually only built in 1901. Not too sure what was here before. We've arrived back where we started, sharing the highlights of this beautiful town. Well, that's it from Painswick. Hope you've enjoyed our little tour around the village. Been absolutely beautiful. We've got more tours like this on our channel, so please go and check out our playlist. We'd love you to subscribe and give us a comment and maybe a like as well. But until the next time, thank you so much for watching. See you again. Bye bye.